By the work of your spirit, Lord, take away every Lord from their shoulders, from their lives. Take away pressure from them. Shaka maha, maha take it. Yes, thank you, my God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Let's take our Bibles. We go to the book of Numbers straight. Holy Spirit is going to help us perceive the truths that he wants us to have. I'm reading from Numbers 21. I'll start from verse 4 for interest sake. The subtitle says The brass serpent on a pole saves the people from snake bites. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. People were discouraged. Because of the journey. Yes, it was a long journey without any water in the wilderness, in the desert. I think they covered a space of about 33 miles, after which the people naturally became tired. They became discouraged because of the way. It has been a long journey. It may be also a long journey for some of you that are here. And as you are here, you are feeling maybe discouraged. You are tempted to feel tired. So we are lingega kugutswena ukatale. I mean, you have been going along with this or through this for quite some time now. Besolo kuge wana utubega kenga logo geskati ge manje. But let us wait. Let us see how God turned the pages of the children of Israel. God forget asasi linze si bona kuti kunukuluge why shinja nganja nige inza bema Israel. Verse 5 says, And the people speak against God and against Moses. That's a wrong reaction. When you get discouraged, you speak against God, to speak against God, to speak against the priest or the man of God. That's a wrong, absolutely wrong reaction. And they said, Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread here, neither is there any water. But see, There's no bread here. There's no provision here. You don't see how. This God is saving us. You've been, you, you've been giving us a vision of God since we came out of Egypt, but till this day, As nothing. And we want to tell you, Moses, we are tired. You take us out of Egypt in order to die here in the wilderness. Because of course they were feeling the pressure. They were feeling the heat. When people are under pressure, when people are feeling the heat, they think of death. And the wrong reaction is they begin to murmur against God. They begin to speak against the man of God. 
Lobesa kubona kala ke kungasiko ke kutsi ke bona bese bacala ke ba khonone kuNkulunkulu bakukhuluma kabe nengcebe yaNkulunkulu. And they make light of the things that God had done, the miracles that God has done in their lives in the past like this light bread they are referring to. This is manna. This was bread from heaven. This was a miracle. Bese kutsi ke yonke imisebenzi yemmangaliso uNkulunkulu ayentile ngephambili nebayende ibe elite. And now they say we hate this bread. We hate this miracle that you showed us. We are not happy with this vision. We rather had gone back to where we're coming from, Egypt. Rather than for us to die here. And these things are recipe for disaster. This is a recipe for disaster. People are tired. People are, 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 are speaking against God. Speaking against men of God. It's a recipe for disaster. Now what happened in the Lord, verse 6, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. In other words, he sent poisonous snakes among the people and they beat the people and much people of Israel died. God allowed or permitted an incurable sickness to come upon the nation Israel. God allowed a pandemic to hit the people. And it came in the form of poisonous snakes. These were snakes filled with venom, with poison. And my Bible says it beat many children of Israel. It beat many people, and many people died. If not thousands, tens of thousands died. Ha <laughs> ha Hallelujah. This is a curse. But there's origin for this. There are origins for this. There's a reason why this came. God for goodness is so sad. Didn't just come. Okay, I, I just want to go on because I'm going somewhere. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against God. Or against the Lord and against you. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Pray unto God that he remove this sickness, this incurable disease. And of course it is a good thing that after going through all the trouble, after the death of so many souls, they realize that we have sinned before God. And they said to Moses, we have spoken against the Lord. Please pray unto God. Ask him to take away the poisonous snakes from us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Your victory starts where? Your victory starts with acknowledgement of sin in your life. Yes. The day you repent, the day you ask for forgiveness, will be the beginning of your true victory. They said, We have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord. As an emissary for the Lord, as an ambassador for God, go to God, ask Him to remove the pandemic. 
wenake njengamba sata wa nkulunkulu hamba uye kuye ucele kuti asusa le sehlakalo haleluya haleluya before we are all finished singakapheli song and moses prayed for the people Say Moses prayed for the people. Say Moses prayed for the people. That's the duty, the task of the men of God to pray for you. I came to pray for you. No matter what. You may be facing, facing something because of a, a resultant case or it might be sin that has led you to where you are. But I am here to pray. You Kunge, just have to repent. Okay, let's go. And the Lord said unto Moses, verse 8, Make you a fiery serpent or a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten when he looks upon it, shall live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, this is the instruction of God. Shortly, I want to finish here. So I was coming to. God says to Moses, make an exact copy of this or these snakes that are biting the people. Make it out of bronze. Take it up, put it on a pole. And it shall be, or it shall come to pass, that if anybody is beaten or is sick already, when he lifts up his eyes and look at this bronze serpent on a pole, he shall live. Everyone that is beaten, when he lifts up his eyes and look at this bronze serpent on a pole, he shall live. In other words, this bronze serpent is supposed to mitigate the effect of the curse of, on the people. He is removing a curse by a picture of a curse. Yes. Are you with me? Are you with me? The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us. People, who is our brazen serpent? Who is our bronze serpent? Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. In other words, Jesus was lifted up. Exactly like Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness. So that we may turn and look. Everyone that is beaten. Say everyone that is beaten. Say everyone that is beaten. In other words, everyone that is infected. I'm not talking about people that are not sick yet or that are not negative yet. I'm speaking about people who are negative to disease. I mean, who are positive to disease. They are already beaten. But if they lift up their eyes to look at the bronze serpent, the Bible says this, they shall be healed. And Moses made a serpent of brass. Verse 9. And put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Say 
Say, I shall look. Turning it down, Buga. Say, I shall look. Turning it down, Buga. Say, I shall look. Turning it down, Buga. And the bronze serpent on the pole. Say, I shall look. Turning it down, Buga. Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, say, I shall look at my bronze serpent, say, I shall look at the author and finisher of my faith, say, Jesus, on the tree, on the cross, say, I shall live. Say, I shall live. Say, my children shall live. Say, my husband shall live. You shall live when you look at the right place. The Bible says, after the snakes had beaten many people, thousands died. But with the exception of those that took up their eyes and placed them on the bronze serpent, on the, on the pole. The Bible says those people were saved. They didn't die. They were healed. In other words, you must know that some people didn't look there. And they still died. But those who were obedient enough to take up their eyes and put them on the bronze serpent, on the pole, the Bible says, they lived. Say, I shall take up my eyes. Say, I shall look at Jesus. Say, I shall look at him. The author and finisher of my faith. Clemens for Jesus Christ. Now, this was a terrible disease. Just like the disease of today, the diseases of today. You may even compare it with what they are saying or talking about these days. It's killing people. But then there's this provision that God is putting together. He says, let's take our eyes and put them on the right place. On Jesus. Our bronze serpent. Even if you are already infected, you shall live. You shall live. Clemens for Jesus. And uh, you cannot look elsewhere and look at the bronze serpent on the pole at the same time. You cannot look two directions at the same time. Okay, let me just say some of you are here and you are battling with symptoms of As, sickness. It may be alarming heart symptoms that are caused by your heart. Your heart is malfunctioning. It may be symptoms of waist pain. It may be respiratory symptoms, something that makes you wonder and, uh, uh, and be curious that don't I have this corona? If you look at it this way, this is what the Holy Spirit was telling me, church. Your symptoms will point you to one direction. 
Nakuke mawele ngo lepa kaza angchela kwa naba zonu kutusike Timba utenu titan komba ke inza weinye Your symptoms will tell you you are sick Timba utenu ke titan chela kwa kutusini ya kula They point you towards sickness Titan komba wena egu kule They point you towards death Titan komba wena egu fen But if you look at this side God has lifted up the bronze serpent for us if you look at the word of God because his promises are yeah and amen in Christ if you look at the word of God the word of God will point you to life say my neighbor Say, my neighbor, if you look at your symptoms of sickness in your body, they point you towards sickness. Say, my neighbor, if you look at those symptoms in your body, they point you towards sickness or death. But if you look at the bronze serpent, say so if you look at the word of God, the word of God will point you to life. Clemens for Jesus Christ. You cannot look at these two directions at the same time. You cannot look at the word of God and look at your symptoms at the same time. A, a lot of us are hindered, or a lot of Christians are hindered by their symptoms in the body. So much so that they forget the promise of God. Instead of focusing on the word he sent his word to heal us and to rescue us from the grave his word is health to their flesh proverbs 4 22 it is health or medication to their whole flesh when you look at the word it points you to life it points you to deliverance because the word of God effectually works in those who believe. I think it's First Thess Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. It says the word of God effectually works. I, I must read this one. I must. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians. Just to finish off here, the Bible says Moses put that bronze serpent upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Oh my God. Look. People, I don't care what is troubling you today. I don't care what you have. Don't what you have. But if you can learn just one thing, learn looking at the right place. No matter what has beaten you, learn to look at the right place. The Bible says, you shall live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to look at the word of Jesus. Because the word has got power. Word of God is sent to deliver us and to heal us. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, For this cause also thank we 
God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of man, but as in truth, the word of God, which, listen to this, which effectually worketh also in you that believe, which effectually worketh, it effectually worketh. In other words, the word of God works in you like medication. It works effectively. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the word of God. Works effectively. Say the word of Jesus. It effectually works in my life, in my body, in my systems. Say the word of God. Works effectively. Say his word works effectively in my life. That's why I choose to see the word of God. I choose to behold the word of God. This is why I choose to consider Jesus. As the Bible says, the apostle and high priest of our profession. Let us look at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Say my neighbor, this is time to look at Jesus. Say my neighbor, look away from everything that distracts. Say look away from your symptoms. Say this is time to look at Jesus. Say this is time to focus at Jesus. Clap your hands. You've got to look at Jesus. Because the word is the source of our faith. Everything else is shaky ground. Everything else is sinking sand. I choose to look at Jesus. Here in Romans chapter 4, there's something that Abraham did. Verse, seven, uh, verse 17 in Romans chapter 4, quickly. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. This is a promise to Abraham, our father, the ancient patriarch. The Bible says, as it is written, I made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God. In other words, he believed this promise of God. He didn't have a child when God gave him this promise. Even God. He believed God who quickened the dead and caused those things which are not as though they were. Abraham chose to believe God. He said, even thou, I still don't have a child. But now God has promised that I'll be a father of a multitude. I choose to believe God. Because I know God can even raise the dead. God calls things that do not exist into existence. That, that was Abraham's reasoning. He knew the kind of God that he served. Then, verse 18 says, Who against hope believed in hope? In other words, Abraham had no hope, but he believed in hope. Against hope. Abraham was called. That it might become the father of men, he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. In other words, he chose to see the promise. He was looking at the promise. All along, he was seeing the promise. Hallelujah. 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 
verse 19 and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither the deadness of Sarah's womb in other words he didn't look at the symptoms in his body he didn't look at the signs in his body. He was already a hundred years old. He was an old man. And Sarah, was, his wife, was 92 years old. In other words, she was barren. She was already a barren woman. She couldn't get a child at that age. But my Bible says Abraham counted him faithful who promised, and he chose to look at the promise. He didn't put his focus on the symptoms in his body or on the circumstances in his situation. Though he was old, though he was in trouble, he lifted up his eyes. And he looked at the bronze serpent. He looked at the word of God. He looked at the author and finisher of his faith. And he said, he is faithful, that promise. As old as I am, I can still get a child. He is faithful, that promise. As sick as I am, I am, I can still get healed. So I don't choose to look around my body. I don't want to look at the symptoms in my child's body. I know one thing by his wounds, we are healed. Yes. People get distracted. They look at the symptoms. They look how sick. They are. How painful they feel. How poor they are. How jobless they are. And they tend to gravitate around that level, that symptoms level. And it hinders them because now they forget to look at the promise of God, at the promise of Jesus. And I'm saying to you, you cannot look at both directions at the same time. It's either you look at your symptoms and become sick and more sick or you look at the word of God and you become 